Hello, wonderful people. I'm Dane Peterson from Wonderbot Animals, and here is... When this man saw a deer with a light on its head, he sprang into action. Before we begin, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. There are no natural predators to deer in the area of New Jersey in high enough numbers to affect the white-tailed deer population. The only real predators they have are humans, motorists, and domestic dogs. But for one deer in the area, its life was almost lost to something that nobody could have predicted, and one of those natural predators actually saved its life. A homeowner in the Colts Neck area noticed a deer in his backyard that seemed to look like a normal deer. Long, skinny legs, a furry brown body, but this deer had one defining characteristic, something that looked like a space helmet or large clear bowl stuck on its head. The owner decided to carefully go out and get a better look, and that was when he realized that the young buck was in terrible trouble. It appeared it had its head stuck in a glass bowl, and given the fact that he was traveling alone, it was clear that he had been ostracized by the herd. Certain species will treat members as outcasts if they look different or are injured so as not to invite predators or disrupt the integrity of the herd, the Monmouth County SPCA, MCSPCA, said in a press release. This was not a good situation. Clearly, the buck couldn't eat or drink with this contraption stuck on its head, and getting fresh oxygen was also a problem. Given how hard it was for the young deer to perform these basic functions, it would only be a matter of time before it lost its life. The homeowner knew that he couldn't act alone, so he placed a rescue call to the MCSPCA for help, along with the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife. The first step was to sedate the buck, and once that was done, the rescue team got to work. The glass bowl was removed, which turned out to be a light fixture cover, which probably had been filled with water the deer tried to drink, the MCSPCA wrote on Facebook. The buck was dehydrated from four days without food and water and had a couple of scrapes, probably from the poor visibility, but was able to get up and walk away after we cleaned him up and the sedative had worn off. Once the deer was freed, the story didn't end. After leaving the scene, the MCSPCA received another call from the homeowner saying that the young buck had laid back down and had labored breathing. It was determined later that the buck had not had access to food or water for almost five days, they knew it was time to call in for some more help again. With help from one of the shelter's veteran veterinary technicians, the deer was given 600 milliliters of fluids. We could tell he was completely dehydrated by the way he looked, the vet said. After we administered the fluids, his head perked right up, and after a few minutes, his breathing returned to normal. But would he be strong enough to join his herd again, or did the event cause permanent damage? The team then stepped back and waited as the deer slowly stood up and began to walk which eventually turned into a trot and then a full-speed dash and leap over a fence into a wooded area. The MCSPCA hasn't received any calls of a lone buck in the area, so after this scary run-in with a discarded light fixture, the young buck can finally enjoy a time of renewal and happiness. But you know what? That's not the only amazing rescue of a troubled deer. This story will pull at your heartstrings if you're an animal lover because it's so hard to try and communicate with wild animals. While you want to help them out and let them know it will be okay, they're wild animals. They just don't get it. But one man who goes only by the name Darius knew when he saw an injured fawn that he had to take action, and he documented this whole incredible journey. The fawn wasn't just your average fawn. It was apparently trying to walk around on an injured leg, and it couldn't keep up with its family. The fawn was helpless, said Darius. She was just born earlier that day and still had some blood on her belly. Not only was she a day old, but she was injured. While you would hope that her mother would stick around, that wasn't the case. Darius knew what he had to do. He brought the deer, who he didn't name in hopes of staying unattached, into his house and made her a splint out of a cardboard oatmeal box. It should be noted here that Darius said he doesn't support keeping wild animals as pets, but this was a special situation. The deer would have most certainly died without food, water, and protection from other predators. So what did the deer think of her new digs? She was very hungry and had no problem with any of my pets. For the first week, she slept by my bed on my shirt, and the shirt became very important to her, Darius said. She had to have it to be able to sleep. To help her leg grow stronger, he used an oatmeal box as a splint. He also nurtured her while she healed, feeding her every four hours. 
I had to do some internet research and reading to be able to understand how to raise a fawn, get up at night to feed her every four hours, and clean her after, Darius said. And soon, she once again learned to walk on an even keel, her spirits began to lift, and she even formed a special relationship with one of the dogs, Mac, who repeatedly licked the fawn's face. In fact, you could say he became her furry foster parent. After lots of hard work, the fawn's legs had returned to full functionality, and even though they had a bond, Darius knew it was time to set her free. She's already used to me, and she follows me, Darius said, but nobody can replace her real mom. But that wasn't easy. He brought the fawn out many evenings to release her with the deer family in the wild, but she always returned, until one day. Since day one, I was hoping to release baby deer back into the wild, he said. I really hoped that she did not get attached to me too much because that would make it very hard to survive in the wild. But Darius let the fawn go and has seen her and the family several times in the wild in the months since the release. I've seen the family many times after release, also seen them recently in the fall, he said. The mother deer usually does not go too far from the place where she feels safe, so she stays around the area. It is a very, very good feeling seeing them safe roaming around, and it was a very, very good thing that Darius did. Don't you love a happy ending?